One of the questions I get all the time is how do you get into law school? Everyone has a different route, but today I thought I'd tell the story of how I got into one of the best law schools in the country. Hey Legal Eagles, D. James Stone here teaching you how to think like a lawyer so you can crush law school. Now, before you can crush law school, you have to get into law school. Now, I have been a practicing litigator for over 10 years now, but before that, I had to go to law school just like everybody else. And so here is my story. Um, I knew from a very early age that I wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, there was a brief period of time when I thought I wanted to be a policeman, uh, but when I learned that police officers are not allowed to carry machine guns, uh, I didn't really want to become a policeman uh, after all. Uh, there was a short period of time when I wanted to be an architect, but uh, that didn't last too long, mainly because uh, I started to see lawyers on TV. I was really into the TV show Law & Order. Now this is back in the day with the original Law & Order series, not the SVU or any of the offshoots, when they would split up the, the episode into half that was for police and then half uh, for lawyers. And I always thought the latter half of the episode that focused only on the lawyers was always the best part. And I knew I wanted to be a lawyer like I saw on TV. Uh, there was only one problem. Uh, my parents uh, put a, a hard limit on how much TV I could watch. I think I was only able to watch 30 minutes of recreational TV, but I was able to watch uh, an unlimited amount of educational TV. Uh, so in one of my first acts of uh, pure legal argument, I convinced my parents that because I wanted to be a lawyer, uh, really law and order was educational TV, and I should be allowed to watch as much Law & Order as I wanted. Uh, for some reason, uh, this argument carried the day, and my parents agreed, and uh, this is back in the day when TBS or TNT, one of those uh, cable channels, would just show Law & Order basically nonstop. I mean, these were almost, uh, during the daytime, uh, the Law & Order channel. And so uh, I had a chance to watch quite a bit of Law & Order, and that provided, um, the goal for what I wanted to do with my career. I think my parents assumed two things based on my arguments. Number one, I think they assumed that uh, if I was willing to make these kind of arguments, uh, that I was really interested in the law and so what harm could it do? Uh, and number two, that they figured I was pretty good at arguing. Um, so that led into high school where I uh, did mock trial in high school. I was really mad because my freshman year they would not let freshmen compete on the mock trial team, so I had to wait until my sophomore year. Uh, graduated from high school, went to college, and uh, I chose the college that I went to because they had one of the best uh, collegiate mock trial teams in the entire country. And in fact, while I was on uh, the college team, we won the national championship uh, twice in a row. Um, in college, I majored in poli-sci mainly because I was interested in it, but it really seemed like so many lawyers had also majored in political science. Um, so I figured if other lawyers uh, majored in poli-sci, it, it probably couldn't hurt. A lot of people ask what majors they should uh, take in college. Um, they see the same thing, that lots of lawyers take poli-sci. Uh, I would say that uh, the poli-sci degree was really interesting for me. Uh, because it was interesting, I put a lot of effort into it, and so I got good grades. But it definitely didn't really help in terms of preparing for law school itself. Just because you know about government doesn't mean that you know uh, what the laws are. or And it certainly doesn't mean that you're able to think like a lawyer just because you know some of the history of governance and maybe even some political theory. So while uh, I really enjoyed my poli-sci degree, um, I don't really think it, it helped me all that much in law school. Um, it, but frankly, no major really helps you that much in law school. Uh, really what you should do is just the major that you are most interested in so that you can get good grades because law schools look at your grades and uh, that helps decide uh, what law school you can go to. 
Now, that being said, I did take a number of electives that did end up being helpful for law school, one of which was a business class that was taught by my mock trial coach. Uh, my mock trial coach was uh, not only a professor at the undergraduate level, but he was also a professor at the, uh, the business school. Uh, and he happened to teach uh, business law classes. Uh, these were mainly for business students, but undergrads could take it. And uh, while it wasn't a great survey of all the different uh, types of substantive law uh, that are out there that you learn in law school, it did provide a framework for what we call a civil procedure in law school. Uh, in law school, you have six core classes, one of which is called Civ Pro, and that's the process of filing a lawsuit and uh, how to file motions and basically everything that leads up to going to trial uh, in a lawsuit. And so that gave me uh, a framework for that specific class in civil procedure. So I'm really uh, happy that I took that, that business law class. Um, I did pretty well in general in undergrad. I graduated summa cum laude, uh, Phi Beta Kappa, uh, and uh, was, was able to graduate with honors uh, from uh, UCLA undergrad. Now, I knew that when I graduated, I immediately wanted to go to law school. I couldn't afford to do a gap year and to travel the world. Uh, and I knew that uh, I didn't want to enter the workforce because that would just be a waste of time because I really wanted to be an attorney. So I didn't want to mess around. I wanted to go straight into law school. So basically from the entire time that I graduated uh, from college uh, for the entire summer and, and a good portion of the fall, uh, I studied for the LSAT. And I think I might have started studying for the LSAT during the school year to, to get a head start. The LSAT is to law schools what the SAT is for college. It's, it's your law school entrance exam. It really is the single most important thing that you can do to get into a good law school is to get a really high LSAT score. Um, and uh, the LSAT is scored from uh, 0 to 180. So if you get a perfect score on the LSAT, you get a 180. The LSAT is scored, I think, using a normal distribution. So uh, really only the top you know, 0.1 or 0.5% get a 180. If you get a 170, that means you're in the 99th percentile. And if you get a 160 or so, you're about in the 90th percentile. And uh, tens of thousands of college students take the LSAT every year. So I had taken a couple of practice tests, uh, practice LSATs, just to see how I scored. And I scored really low, uh, just with no studying whatsoever. Uh, so I knew that I needed to take a, a prep course in order to boost my score to get into a, a good law school. Um, there are several good options out there right now. I highly recommend uh, live courses, the, the ones that force you to go into the class and force you to study as opposed to the ones that are, are self-directed because you know it's, it's so important that you really have to squeeze out every point you can um, and I just didn't trust myself to study on my own, at least to learn the, the strategies. I took a course uh, with a company called Testmaster uh, that was based out of California, and I think they've expanded nationally now. I took their live class, and I was actually instructed by one of the instructors who would go on to form uh, the competitor to Testmasters called Blueprint. Uh, and I, I think those instructors were just phenomenal. The original test masters um, instructors and also the ones that defected and went off to, uh, to Blueprint, I think they are, are really phenomenal. So I always recommend those two companies um, and especially their live courses. They are, they're really pricey. Uh, I mean, on the order of uh, $1,500 to $2,000, but the instruction that you get is, is just really good and it's an investment in your future. You can't get into a good law school without a really stellar LSAT score. Um, so I, I think it's, it's just a worthwhile investment. It's expensive, but I, I think you just have to do it. After I took the live class with uh, Test Masters, uh, I then basically buckled down with my college roommate and we practiced uh, taking LSATs every day for about two and a half months. I mean, we just, we studied all day, every day. And um, by the end of the summer, we had taken every single publicly available LSAT uh, that had been published. So that was on the order of hundreds of LSATs. 
Um, and both he and I were, uh, were scoring in the 99th percentile. Uh, he averaged, I think, a 174, and I averaged a 172. Um, so I went into the LSAT feeling very confident. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, the day I took the LSAT, uh, still can't really explain it, but I scored significantly lower than I had in practice. Uh, I scored in the mid-160s, so that still pisses me off to this day, uh, but the score was high enough that I could apply uh, to most of the schools that I wanted to apply to and have a reasonably good shot at getting into a few of them. Um, so I applied to pretty much every school in the top 20, and uh, some of the schools that were outside of the top 20 but were regionally very good. I, I knew for personal reasons that I wanted to stay in Los Angeles, um, so I was really, really looking to get into UCLA. Uh, I was also looking at USC. I also looked at uh, Loyola and Pepperdine. Uh, I considered some East Coast schools, uh, some Northern California schools, uh, and I basically just applied everywhere in the top 20s, hoping that a few of them uh, would stick against the wall. Uh, and that summer, I, uh, I got into a few, and I was waitlisted at a few. I got waitlisted at Cornell, Duke, uh, and UCLA. I got into Loyola and Pepperdine, uh, so I knew I could stay in Los Angeles if I wanted to. Um, my study partner, uh, my roommate, scored uh, a 172 on his exam, or it might have been a 170, so he was safely within uh, the 99th percentile of the LSAT, and he got into Stanford through early admission. So, Good for him. <laughs> uh, but I played the waitlist game for most of the summer. Um, and uh, for personal reasons, I wanted to stay in LA. So I was really hoping uh, to get into UCLA and USC. Now, that being said, since I was uh, an undergrad UCLA Bruin, I was really, really reluctant uh, about going to USC. Uh, nothing against the school. It's, it's a fine school. Uh, it's just that UCLA Bruins hate USC Trojans and vice versa. So um, I decided I would, uh, even though I, I got into USC, I was still playing the waitlist game over the summer, hoping that I could get in off of the waitlist into UCLA. So uh, eventually, a few weeks before school started, I was looking for apartments close to the USC campus. I had resigned myself to going to USC in downtown LA. And I actually signed a lease in Hollywood. I figured that was a reasonably close neighborhood to, to downtown LA. And it was the day that I signed the lease uh, for an apartment in Hollywood that I got the call from uh, UCLA admissions letting me know that I got in off of the wait list. Um, I did uh, a few tactics to, to get in off of the wait list. Um, so I was pestering the, the UCLA admissions uh, department probably more than I should have, but my efforts paid off. Uh, I got into UCLA and that's where I decided to go. I graduated uh, from UCLA Law, stayed in the LA area, and became uh, a practicing attorney uh, in LA. Now, the story of how I did well in law school will have to wait for another day, but if you want to hear more about my experience in law school and my experience as a practicing litigator, check out this quick playlist I put together. It includes a bunch of legal war stories, uh, and so just click on that playlist, and I'll see you in the next video.